Shauna Hargis from Farm Girl Knits. This will be episode five. And episode five will probably be like the last couple and be over the course of a few days or something. Maybe the rest of the week. But for now, I just wanted to show you a few things I've been working on. And um, before I forget, because I usually forget, um, you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as SL Hargis. And um, I have a website, shonahargis.com. I'll put um, I'll put that in the beginning like I have in previous. I think I forgot to do that last episode, but I'll definitely put that in at the beginning of this episode. And um, this past week, I actually cleaned out my craft room, so I thought I would use my craft room as the spot for the podcast and see how that goes for today. So, one thing, let's see, let's start with some dyeing that I've done. So, last week, okay. I didn't think the light was going to be this bright. Hold on just a minute. Let me close the blinds. Okay, maybe that'll be a little bit better. My face still looks a bit bright, but I don't know what else to do about that. Um, oh, at least the yarn isn't so crazy. Okay, so this I dyed up last week, and I'm not really sure, not really sure what I might call this color, but I really, really love it, and... I did just gray. The sparkles, oh yeah, they're kind of showing up. So it is sparkle yarn. Um, what is it like? Let me think. Let me think. 75% merino, 15 nylon, 20 nylon, and 5 stellina. Yeah, that's right. So 75, 20, and 5. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see the sparkles. I didn't know if they'd show up on here or not. And this was one of the first skeins of sparkle yarn that I've actually dyed. And I decided to, um, I wanted to do a neutral to match up with the Galaxy yarn, which I was going to just Then I added some speckles and I probably could have added a few more speckles, but I didn't want to, you know, overdo it because I'm, I usually end up overdoing it on the speckles. But anyways, here's what it looks like unwound. So, yeah, there's really not very many speckles. But I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think if I try to do this um, particular again, I will try to add a few more speckles. But I still like it. And so the plan is to pair this with the Galaxy Yarn by Bad Wolf Girl Studios and make a All About Brioche shawl. Um, I'm almost tempted to do the hat, do a hat with this, which I'll show you the hat in just a minute. But the original plan was to do the All About Brioche shawl, so I guess I could do that. I mean, it would be good either way. I'm afraid I won't be wearing, I wouldn't get as much wear out of the shawl as I would a hat, but I'm not really sure. Um, I'll probably do a little swatch to see what I like best. Um, I did forget to grab my other, my finished object. Well, actually, I was going to show you this as a work in progress, but I didn't end up getting around to doing any filming over the weekend or at the end of the last week. Well, I think it, let's see here, last Tuesday, I think, or Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday maybe, I did some dyeing. I dyed up several skeins of yarn. So that's whenever I dyed that gray I just showed you. And I also dyed a blue and pink. So here is the Vanilla Fog hat patterned by Andrea Mowry. And so it's a brioche pattern. And it's using fingering weight yarn, but you hold it double. So therefore, it's I, I think it would be a DK weight, sort of. And a size 6 circular needles is what I used. Um, I showed them in another episode. They were from Knit Picks. They were the Rainbow Wood. I can't remember if it's Caspian or what. But anyways, 
Rainbow Wood by Knit Picks. It was 16 inch circular. And um, I really, really loved those needles. Like I've said before in some in previous episodes, I've gotten to where I really prefer knitting with wood needles. So these, the Rainbow Wood, obviously wooden needles. But anyways, they're very pretty. And <clears throat> this pattern, I was not expecting to get it done so quickly. So I thought I would work on it some and then show, um, talk a little bit about how the brioche has worked because I know some people are a little intimidated by that. I was intimidated by a brioche whenever I first, um, first <clears throat> read about it sometime. I don't know when it was this year, but anyways, this is so like just soft and squishy. I just love the brioche fabric and it's really not anything to be intimidated by. Um, I'm definitely going to be making another one of these. So, and probably pretty soon. Um, this is going to be for a for my one of my cousins. And I thought I would make an opposite hat for my sister. Because my sister and this particular cousin are the same age. And very, very close. Um, they're, I think, five years. I think they're the same age. I know my sister's five years younger than me. But anyways, these two are very, very close, so I thought I would make an opposite hat. So, the pattern uses, you know, more of this color than the bottom. So, I thought for my sisters, I would reverse it and do pink, then the turquoise. And, um, the turquoise and the pink are both on a sparkle yarn. The sparkle is sort of showing up in the, the thing here. It looks way more sparkly in real life. Like, you can really see the sparkle. Um, but for some reason, it just wasn't catching on on the iPad right at the moment. And um, I really don't know why my face is so incredibly bright. I apologize for that. I might need to invest in some sort of sheer curtain for in here if I'm going to be filming in here much. But anyway, I don't have that. We live way out in the country. We're the, the last house on our, we, there's only two, ha well, sorry, there's three houses on here. There's only two occupants. So my husband's brother lives at the top of the hill. His granny's house is up there, but she no longer lives there. And then we're down here at the bottom. Last house on the road. Nobody comes through. So I don't really have much curtains. I have, um, what are them? Balances? Whatever. I guess what they're called. Um, but we don't use curtains to cover the windows. We don't use, usually the blinds are up. I mean, people aren't going to be looking in here. I don't care about that. But anyways, um, so the only room that really has curtains is our bedroom. And the living room has curtains, but they're always open. Um, but anyways, I digress. I'm going to have to get something to kind of block some of the light if I'm going to be podcasting in here. Because, um... My face is kind of like glaring at the moment, so I apologize. But I won't be in here too long. I mean, I won't be showing it, filming too long. But anyway, I used um, the pom-pom maker to, to do the pom-pom. I kind of, this is my first um, fingering weight pom-pom, so I kind of wish I had grabbed it more, you know, made it even thicker. But, you know, we live and learn. So this is a gift. They can't be too too picky, I don't guess. I think she'll still like it. The pink ended up being a bit paler than what I first imagined. I dyed all this yarn, the pink, the blue, and the gray, and I had wanted the blue and the pink both to be pale. Um, I was kind of copying the vanilla fog picture that, you know, was in the pattern because she had a pale blue and a pale pink, and I really, really love that combination. But whenever I dyed it, the pink ended up being pale, but the blue, I put some dye in there, put the yarn in, and it just was not enough. It was not blue enough. So I took the yarn out, added some dye, and I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference. I didn't add that much dye, but it really, really got more saturated than what I wanted. However, I love, love, love this color of blue. So, um, and I just hear somebody come in the house, so I'm going to take a break. Okay, so I'm back, and I did a little adjusting, but I think I got a little crooked. Okay, so I did a little adjusting to the camera. 
I still think it's a little bright, but oh well, we'll just go with it. It'll have to work. So, um, let's see. There's the yarn I dyed. Um, I did also dye another skein. Actually, I just, this is an over dye. So, I've been trying to get all the colors for my so faded sweater and this um was a, a pale gray purple so i put it back i reskained it i decided it was too light i reskained it put it back in in um a darker blue um with some a blue black combo that i'm i mixed up and so i think it i think it looks pretty good and you know it's um you still have purple still have gray in there but i have um blue and i think it'll i think it'll work good um so i'll go ahead and talk about my so faded sweater which i've got a lot of progress done on it actually like i love been knitting on it it's really flying by maybe i'm finally getting faster at knitting i don't know but anyways this is the so faded sweater pattern by andrea mowry um yeah she is one of my favorite designers apparently because I'm just wanting to make all of her patterns but anyway um so all this yarn as I've talked about before was dyed by me I used a tweed based yarn which sometimes I look at it and I'm thinking I should not have used tweed but then sometimes I look at it and I'm like yeah I think this will look good this will be like something this will be something I can wear and it is in all you know my favorite colors kind of dark and purples and grays and blues um I don't do bright colors I do bright colors obviously on my wall and decorations but I don't wear bright colors um so I think that this will be you know this will fit in my wardrobe very well um so I haven't gotten around to naming all of my colors I really don't know what I would name them even if I did but this um top only the top to be light so i put some really pale blue pink purple speckles in it then i faded into um a grayish purple and then into this third color that i really swear i thought it was going to be purple but it turned out to be more blue where's it at well so here's the first color caked up then the second then oh it's all stuck hold on just a second sorry okay then this so it's a bluish purple but I just thought it had more purple in it um but it turns out whenever I start ending it up a lot of um it's kind of half and half really blue purple but I think that'll fade in quite nicely to that to this last color and I just I hope it doesn't look too too much the same um it looks pretty similar I don't know maybe it'll fade maybe you can tell it's a different color we'll see um but I don't want it I mean I don't want the the sweater I don't I didn't want it I wanted it to fade I didn't want it to be like real stripy so you know Whenever I first started fading in these colors, like I, this I could tell, you know, there was a difference, but it was very subtle. And then this, between the second, or the, yeah, the second and the third color, I was really starting to worry that you wouldn't be able to tell I faded at all. But once I started knitting, I got a bunch of it knit, you can tell. It's definitely darker. Um, what size needles? I did have to go down to a size three. Um the other I think it calls for a size five so I did part of a swatch I started to get swatch on five then I started to know the second swatch on size four and before I even took the time to finish those I knew the fabric I was getting was just gonna be too loose like I, I don't think it would have met gauge anyway the best I could tell it was gonna be you know the stitch the what am I trying to say too many stitches per inch or whatever too few too, the stitches were too big um so 
I stopped both of those before I wasted too much time swatching on something that I knew I wouldn't even like the fabric on. So I went ahead and ordered a size 3. I finished that swatch. That's when I decided I needed to make the colors darker. It was too pale. So um, I re-skained two of them, re-dyed them. Then I re -dyed one a third time. So you can definitely over-dye your yarn and no problems. I've learned that, but... I digress. Um, so anyways, I think I'm, I think I got gauge the best I, I mean, I'm not that great at measuring it, but I'm pretty sure it's right on now with the size three. I don't know if it's because I knit loose, loosely, or if it's something about this yarn, maybe, I don't know that, I'm not that I don't know that much about weight, yarn gauges, yarn weights. Apparently I'm having a really hard time talking today. But this might be a light fingering weight yarn versus, um, you know, other yarns. I'm not sure. Maybe that's part of it. But anyway, um, I had to go down to a size 3. I think I talked about in the last one. I started to do the, I have a 36 inch bust. I started to do the size 38. Then after watching the Bad Wolf Girl podcast and she talked about going up to another size, I decided I would go up. So I'm actually doing the 42 inch size and I have, I've tried it on a couple of times. Like I tried it on at, whenever I got finished with the first color, I put it on scrap yarn and tried it on just to make sure the sleeve after I separated for sleeves, um, I went down a little bit, and so I tried it on there to make sure that um, the sleeves were going to not be the, not be too tight, and um, also to make sure it fit fine around here, it wasn't too big. Because at that point, I was kind of really afraid it was going to be too big, which wouldn't be too bad. I mean, I would still wear it. It's just I didn't want it to look like, you know, really, really bad. But I think I'm going to end up having to dye up a fifth color because since it is going to be a little loose, I think it would be good to wear with leggings this winter, this fall and winter. So I'm going to want it to make sure it's long enough to cover up my bottom. Um, so at the moment, it appears that it's going to, you know, hit right about here. And I am on the third color. So, so far I was going to do four colors. So I'm afraid the fourth color is just going to get, I mean, let's see. So I'm at least halfway through the, the third color. So I'm afraid the fourth color is only going to get to like my, you know, top of my pants or something. Or right maybe below my pants. And I really need it to come down like to my fingertips whenever... I think my fingertips. I don't know. I have pretty short arms. So I think I want it to come down whenever I, like, I stand up. I want the, the length to be down to my fingertips. And so I'm probably going to have to get a fifth color. And I really don't know what kind of color to use. So if anybody wants to comment down below, that'd be great. Um, so right now I have pale, white, with a few speckles. I have this um, grayish purple. I have, whoops, wait, that's the fourth color. <clears throat> uh, third color is this um, purpley blue and then a darker blue purple. So I'm thinking maybe for the, if I do a fifth color, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to, um, I'm thinking maybe doing like a black with some purple and blue. I'm a little bit afraid, to be honest, I'm a little bit afraid to dye black because I've heard about it, you know, turning out bad. But um, so far I've only used the black to mix in with the different colors to, you know, tone them down because I'm not a fan of bright colors. So I'm a little bit afraid of doing the black, but in my mind I would really love to um, do a black with some streaks of purple, dark purple, and dark blue. 
I don't know if that's going to work out. Um, what I might do is dye it gray, then over dye it with um, a low immersion so that way I can pour in the black, purple, and blue and hopefully the, the original gray would tone down the colors enough. Because I think that's why this one is so dark because it was already dyed blue, I mean, sorry, purple, gray, and then I put the blue over top of the gray. So I think that is why it's darker blue than what I've been using. So I may do that. I don't know. Again, comment down below if you have any suggestions or tips. Um, one more thing. So I, I did order, uh, ooh, my ring's turned around backwards. That's weird. Um, so I did order some more needles because I have a problem with ordering needles. It's, it's, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to see how many needles I can order within a few months time. <laughs> I, I need a, I need an intervention, a intervention, I guess. Um, so here is, what are they? Knitter's Pride Dreams in size three and 32 inches. So I started off with a 24 inch thing. Um, some point that was getting just too crazy. So I did switch over to a 40 inch up here somewhere. But then after I combined or joined in the round again, how is it works? Let me think. As you might have could tell from pictures, you start off flat, then at some point you somewhere in through here, you join in the round, and then after you separate for sleeves, um, you're still in the round. But anyways, sometime after I joined in the round and before I or when I slip before I separated for the sleeves, I did switch over to my 40 inch um, lock circular needle and um because it was just too bunched up it was so bunched up on the 24 inch then the 40 inch once i got back i got rid of all these sleeve stitches um and got back down here it was getting a little bit the 40 inch was a little bit too big so i ordered a size a 32 inch circular and that's perfect for for me um as you can see it's bunched up a little bit but not too much and these needles, they're my new favorite. I mean, every needle I try apparently is my favorite, but they're Knitter's Pride Dreams. And because I like nice puns, they are a dream to knit with. So if you think you might want to try wood needles, I highly suggest these. Or the Lack needles, spelled L-Y-K-K-E. Or the Rainbow Wood. But... These are just so smooth. I don't know. I, I can't. I'm not sure which one's my favorite. Apparently it's whichever one I'm knitting with at the time. But the Knitter's Pride Dreams are really, really, really awesome. So I recommend any of those. Um, those might just be my favorite. And then let's see. Here's the lock. There's the lock needle. No, no. Sorry. My bad. I thought I'd lost these. This is the Chiagu Bamboo. That's the 24 inch one I had. This is the Light Needles 40 inch. So I'm keeping, that's the package for the Nears Pride. Keeping everything in here in case I need a different size. They're all, I have three size three needles. I should just get um, interchangeable ones, but I don't know. I've had some, I've had an, well, I, the only ones I've knit with for years was an interchangeable set from, how do you say that, Boy, something like that, B-O-Y-E, and I just don't like them loosening up. Like, I would, you know, try to crank it down with the little key they gave and all this stuff, but it would loosen up eventually, and I just don't like, you know, the twist. Um, also, the sets I've looked at for interchangeables... They, you know, have, I really apologize for this glare on my glasses, sorry. Um, the sets I've looked at for interchangeables will have all these different size needles and, you know, like really, I might be needing something 
I might be needing three things that require the same size needle, but I don't need like a size 17. I'm never going to use that or a size 10. I don't use that very often. So I don't know. I just, I don't really like the idea of getting another interchangeable set. But that being said, the nitpicks, whatever they are, Caspian something or others, you can get them singly, which I probably should have done that. But, you know, it's okay. I'll just uh, keep trying different brands. Um, this is my bag, my, um, my project bag that I made. And I've been working on a lot of these today. So, as soon as I get pictures, well, i got to get drawstrings put in on. And as soon as I get pictures up, I'm going to start my, my Etsy shop. Um, this, I thought this would be my medium bag, but, you know... It holds all four skeins and my sweater. So maybe this is a large bag, actually. I don't know. I need to look up, I guess. Actually, you know, if anybody's watching this and wants to comment, tell me what size bag you like the best. But I think this is 15 inches wide. I'm pretty sure it's 15 inches wide. And I know it's 5 inches deep. I don't remember how tall it is. Maybe 11 I don't know. I had to measure it again. Um, but anyways, there's plenty of room in here, actually. Like, you can see, even with those, I know, even with the, the yarn that I just showed you and the sweater, there's still, I fold it down. It's tall enough that I fold it down when I'm knitting, and that helps it to, you know, set up like this, like a bowl. So I knit, then whenever I get finished, I just flop it up and draw string it. I can also either put the little strings over my shoulder or sometimes I like to tie it in a bow and then I have like a little carry handle. I have thought about adding a handle to the side but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know. Can you comment and tell me if you'd like to have a handle on the side of the bag? Um, but anyway, that's that. Um, while we're on topic of bags, here's the bag that's going to be the start of my Etsy shop. This dream catcher material. I really want to order some more of this and make a skirt. If you've watched the Yarn Hoarder podcast, she is going on what she's calling the No Pants Revolution. And she's got the coolest material like it's so cute the material she's picked out and it's um you know random stuff like i think she had one with snails she had one with cat food jar or cat food cans um my favorite was the toxic campground i think it was and um you know i'm really big on environmentally friendly stuff and all that um I think we should really care about the environment and try to save it for, preserve it for um, future generations, but the Toxic Campground really spoke to me and I wish I knew where she got that material because I would totally get that and my, I, I really want a project bag or a backpack or something out of that. Um, but anyways, I've got to put the drawstrings in here, but I want a skirt out of this string catcher material or dress or something and I think I'm going to order some. and. Um, and make, make me a skirt or a dress or something. I don't know. I may. I may not. Um, I like to do the contrast on the bottom. I just think it adds a little bit of, you know, extra. And so there's, see this one has a linen inside. Because, you know, I, I don't know. I just wanted to keep the dream catcher one pr pretty plain on the inside. Um, so I've got <clears throat> some of those. I've got the Exploding Tardis. And see, this exploding tortoise has a denim base, which I really love the denim base on this one. Um, I have two of these. This one has the gray canvas, um, <clears throat> so I still like it. But once I started with the, done the denim one, I was like, "Ooh, that one's great." But anyways, go, so we got denim or canvas for the <clears throat> dream catcher. This is the same material as project bag that's held in my sofa sweater. And as you saw earlier, 
the insides. It's really cool, paisley flower stuff. Um, <clears throat> I really love this camping, <coughs> excuse me, this camping summertime RV stuff material. Um, another color that I've got is this uh, TP cactus. And this has the gray canvas on the bottom. And it also has a spare thread. Um, the cactuses, the little print, Aztec print, turquoise is my fave color. Well, any shade of blue. I'll rephrase that. Any shade of blue is my fave. So, um, this, this material just really spoke to me. So, we've got one with gray canvas bottom. And we've got two with um, denim. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to have to keep one of these and one of the dream catchers because like I said it just those materials really showcase my personality um <clears throat> okay so that's all the bags I have hopefully my shop can go up sometime within the next week I'm gonna put the drawstrings in I'll I'm not really sure how I'm gonna photograph it yet and um, I'm not as, I'm not too used to pho to photographing products. I generally photograph people or landscapes, but you know products can't be that much different. Maybe I think I can do it. Um, so I'll try to do that within the next week or so. And um, I'm really needing to get started on some sort of some form of income because. As I've mentioned before, I don't have a job. I gotta find something. Um, so, I've already talked about these some, but I have, I did put the heel in this um, Beauty and the Beast slash Exploding Tardis sock. I don't know, it's supposed to be Beauty and the Beast, but it so matches this. I really want to start calling it my Exploding Tardis socks instead of my Beauty and the Beast socks. Um, this yarn, as I mentioned before, Bad Wolf Girl Studio, Tell Us Otis Time and Space. Which I really think she did as a reference to both Beauty and the Beast and the episode um, Vincent and the Doctor. But anyway, that's got that. Oh, Fish Lips Kiss Heel which is the heel I use all the time now just because it's it's simple and I'm getting a lot faster at making at doing the heel really um I didn't have nearly as much trouble that time like um trouble as in remembering what I'm supposed to do and I didn't have to refer to the pattern as much as I had in the past um then I started these yesterday because I figure if I cast off the hat then bind off the hat whatever you want to call it, then I can cast on something new, and it appears those socks are going to be a one at a time sock, as are these. So I showed you the Felici soft serve um, last episode, and the my socks are always, um, I've always, <clears throat> let me rephrase this. I like to use, what is it would be, size 1, is that what it is? 2.25 millimeter. Yes, size 1 needle. So, in a, unless, I t unless I change my mind, I always am going to use size 1, 2.25. I have toyed with the idea of going down to a size 0, but I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about that. Um, if my gauge loosens up any, then I will have to go down to a size zero. So, I always cast on 56 stitches, or I always do 56 stitches, and I have recently started doing toe-up socks, um, which I think I really like better than the cuff down, because the, what is that, Janine's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off, um, really stretches, like, for casting on, I was doing what is called a double star cast on, and it's stretchy, but it's not super stretchy. 
and Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off is super stretchy and I haven't had any trouble with it flaring out um, I've done two socks yeah two socks um, toe up and I on both of those socks I don't have any problems with the bind off flaring the cuff the top flaring out any but it fits nicely over my my legs which I've mentioned are quite large this is soft serve Nick picks Felici the toe is um, nitpicks stroll and white and um, the pattern is Times Square socks by Mina Phillips so the June New York sock pattern club June month of June whatever you can call it but anyways New York sock pattern club these are the June socks and this is just these are just so look at that pattern it is so awesome I love 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 this and I just started on these last night yesterday evening I started on the heel I raised the heel started on the toe then we went out to eat so I took <clears throat> I've been taking my so faded sweater with me when we go somewhere because I'm finally to the point where I can knit stocking net and not have to look at it so therefore even around the curves to go to our house from our house to town I can knit in the car so that is just you know really really makes me happy that I've I've come to a point where I can knit without looking um so I took that with me but I started on the toe yesterday afternoon and then last night after we got home I finished the toe I started on just an itty bit part like six rows six rounds of the pattern and then this morning I did um, all this which I'm sure I sit on my butt too much knitting but it is so fun and relaxing now this pattern looks like a cable but it's not a cable um it's like you just it's just really cool it's paper pattern I'm not going to give much of it away just if you are worried about or intimidated by cables this is not a cable it's a faux cable or something um, and there's a special little stitch in there that makes it appear that you're make, doing a cable with that being said though even if it was a cable if you have a pattern you've been looking at and it is a cabled pattern and you're kind of intimidated by cables don't be because cables I've done cable hats um, in the past and I really really enjoy the cables now I do not enjoy lace I have discovered that so if you're a lace person maybe you won't like cables but um, definitely don't be intimidated by cables because it's not that hard um, don't be intimidated by brioche either because it's not as hard as you would think. I mean, I thought brioche and I thought cables both. I thought both of those were going to be like really hard. You know, they look intricate. The cables look very intricate. And I'm sure some of them are. I've just done simple cable patterns. Um, but I'd like to try more in, you know, more crazy ones. Um, brioche looks like it might be a little hard. But and brioche does take a little bit of adjustment to... Um, just get get used to seeing like what a brioche knit stitch looks like what a brioche pearl stitch looks like I had to watch some videos but anyways back to my point don't be intimidated by brioche don't be intimidated by cables in my opinion both are much much easier than knitting lace I don't know I just have a problem with the lace the the yarn overs and the knit two together here and then knit two together a different way here and SSK and all this other stuff it's like just too much for my brain to handle the brioche is you know just each row is done the same way um, it's very repetitive I can do repetitive things what I don't like about lace is that um, the patterns are not always all that repetitive like it'll have 
like the find your fade, you know, we're done the V shape. It was like a mirror image of each side. And so I don't do as well with that, I don't guess. Um, I thought this was going to be quick, but no, we're going on 32 minutes. Um, so here is the spring into summer shawl, which I have not actually worked on this week, but I went in to get your all's opinion. Um, I really like the way this pattern looks. And every time I take it out, I think this texture is just so, you know, so nice. But I don't like knitting it because it's really, really, really slow. And I'm already a slow knitter to begin with. Um, and it seems like I'm always getting off track with the, the texture. But anyways, I have... I've been tempted to frog it completely, but I've put a lot of time into this, and my sister really likes it, I think. Maybe she just says that. I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's been in previous episodes, but here's what it looks like so far. I'm at least halfway, maybe a little over halfway done. Maybe halfway. I don't know. But anyways, the lace part here was like my nemesis. I, I almost didn't get it finished. It looks really good. The pattern is not that it was anything hard. It was just, you know, how many laces. Yarn over here, knit two together there, um, and so on and so forth. But it looks really pretty. I don't know that I've done it exactly right. I probably didn't, but, you know, it's okay. Um, but what I've wondered about doing is either finishing out this texture this texture pattern here or going back taking this all out and going back to the garter stitch but I've wondered about just finishing the rest of the shawl in just garter stitch so if anyone could comment and tell me what you think about that how bad would it look because all this is the texture pattern, like it's supposed to be. Um, so, how bad would it look to have a scarf, a shawl, sorry, a shawl, that's half texture, half garter stitch? Would that be bad? Um, or, I might do, like, finish this section, do like, I don't know, four inches or so of this color, then the next color be garter stitch for four inches, then do a texture pattern, and a garter pattern, and so on and so forth. I don't know, can, I, I need, I guess I need some opinions here. On, I want it to look good, but in order for me to ever finish it, I'm going to need to, to have more garter stitch sections because I'm really slow. Like, it took Mina, this is Spring into Summer Shaw by Mina Phillip, the knitting expat, and when I was watching her, her podcast and I noticed that it took her, you know, several episodes to finish it, that should have been a sign that it's going to take me like a year to finish it. I mean, she knits a pair of socks in probably less than a day. And it takes me two weeks to knit a pair of socks. So, she's like, you know, fast forward, zoom knitter or something. Um, I really don't know how she does it. If you ever look up, if you ever want to look up tutorial, you need to look up one of her tutorials, especially the two at a time socks. And just see how fast she knits. It's insane. It looks like she's fast forwarded, but she really didn't. She's just knitting that fast. Um, I think I heard on somebody's podcast that her snow day shawl or whatever it is, um, she knit that in a whole day, like one day, a whole shawl in one day. It's insane. So the problem with this shawl is I'm impatient. And I'm a slow knitter. Um, so totally my fault. Nothing at all wrong with the pattern. The pattern is very well very well written. 
it's very lovely. I really love all of her patterns that I've used and you know I've gotten several. I've gotten the um, the brioche shawl that I've I haven't worked on this week but I've shown in previous podcasts. That's her pattern and it is excellent for a first time brioche knitting. Um, the sock patterns I've used all the sock patterns I've used have been by Mina Phillips, the Knitting Expat. So I love her patterns. Please don't think that I'm telling you not to go out and purchase this. Um, because it is a very lovely shawl. But for some reason, I just... I'm having trouble with it. Because I don't know. I don't know why I'm having trouble with it. Um, I guess it's just one of them things. My brain isn't really comprehending it. I'm impatient. And I need some, I need more rows of just plain knitting to speed things up. So I need to add in some garter stitch rows. And I just don't know. I don't want it to look bad. But I don't know. I also have a problem with rambling on too much. So this short little, you know, few minutes that I was going to spend has turned into 40 minutes. Um, so I've got to get outside and get some stuff done. I definitely want to ride the horse today. And I don't know exactly when I will get this podcast uploaded. But since it's running on to about 40 minutes, I probably... This may end up being a just a one thing. A one day thing. Um, I don't know. So, I may be... I, I don't know. But anyway... Um, so, thanks to everyone that has tuned in. Thanks to anybody that has came back. Um, any returning viewers. Thanks to all the new viewers. I really, you know, I'm just, I can't believe anybody even wanted to watch me ramble on about knitting, but they have. And, um, I just want to say thank you. Um, please, if you like this video... You know, give it a thumbs up, and hopefully that'll get it, you know, get, I don't know if it works. I know in Facebook world, the more likes you get, the more um, people actually see the, the, the post. So I'm thinking it might be similar in YouTube. If you get more likes on the video, it shows up in more people's, you know, um, you might like this thing at the side. Um... But anyways, enough rambling, and um, I'll see you again later. Bye-bye. Hi. Um, I'm back again. Today is Friday, June 23rd, and um, probably won't have my, anything else to add after this quick little bit here. Um, so, but I just wanted to share with you for just a minute. So... Really, the only thing I've been working on since the first part of this podcast, which I think was filmed on Monday, is that right? Um, really, the only thing I've been working on is my So Faded sweater all week. That's all, it, all I've done. I did get a little unconventional here and go ahead and start on the sleeve, mostly because I just was so curious how much yarn it was going to take. So, at the moment, the sleeve is back on... Um, scrap yarn and I'm waiting I've got um, the third color in the sleeve which <clears throat> I started changing before like right up here whenever it was still before I separated for the sleeves so I had part of the second color already there I finished out the second color started on then the third color and four inches of it just so I could see um, you know how much yarn it would use because I was really curious. The sleeves are quite a bit more tedious to do just because, I don't know. I've wondered, does anybody ever use um, a 9 inch circular for the sleeves? I'm tempted, really tempted, to try to find a 9 inch circular to use um, for the sleeves on this because I think that might make it a little bit faster. I don't know, but I magic looped these. Um, I did forget to put the the um, the cord for the needles into some hot water um, to kind of loosen it up 
that seems to help a lot with with magic looping and um, I apologize for the glare on my glasses I might be a little bit too close to the window but I don't know sorry um, anyway so um, that's the sleeve and at the moment um, I've got about three inches done on the fourth color so these are all hand dyed by me the first color I probably talked about this the other day um, I wanted to go from light to dark so I wanted the first color to be mostly just the bare yarn so it's just got a few little specks of pale purple and blue ever a little bit um, I did use the Donegal or whatever the tweed yarn and it's a 85 merino 15 nylon um, and then it's got the, the nylon is the, the parts you see there the undyable stuff the brown and black bits <clears throat> I think it would have been really cool if I had got the rainbow I almost got the rainbow tweed but then I don't know I'm just not a rainbowy person I guess but I mentioned in my the bit I did on Monday that I wasn't like a hundred percent like sometimes I would look at the yarn and like it and sometimes I wouldn't sometimes I thought I think it might be just a little bit too speckly but the more I knit on it and you see it goes from you know into a pale purple and then a dark bluish purple and then the last color is um, mostly just blue really you can't tell much difference in the third and fourth color but that's okay I guess um, I like it better I didn't want a real contrasting change so I like it where it fades you know just gets gradually darker and um, as I've watched the color changes um, in real life you can see when you're looking at it that this is more blue I just don't know that I don't know that the blues really picking up very well I'm not meh. You can kind of tell a difference. I changed right here where this yellow marker is. Um, anyways, so the more I, I work on this and the more the color, you know, I do each color change, I like it better and better. These are, you know, these are my colors. Like, I like, you know, to wear darker, um, cooler colors like blues, purples, and um, that stuff. Mostly... You know, the majority of my shirts is blue and gray, and my sister is constantly making fun of me because everything is darker colors. Now, um, yesterday I did I did decide I wanted <clears throat> to make it. Talked about this on Monday some. I decided I want to make it a bit um, longer than what I originally planned, and I was going to just increase how like. Instead of making four inches for each of these last two colors, I thought I might like, you know, do a couple more inches of those two colors and that'd be long enough. But then I wanted to make sure I had enough for the sleeves. And after doing, you know, this sleeve, I was a little afraid that if I did two more inches in the body and then two more inches in each sleeve, I would run out. So I decided just to stick with each color being four. Well, this color is, um, I done six inches of this color because she suggests for the top color you do maybe do a little bit more because of the neck shaping um and I still got to come back and put the collar on but I did a little bit more of this one then I did um four inches of these colors then so I just decided I'd go ahead and dye the fifth color so yesterday I dyed this and this is really what I wanted to show you today so this um I know it's summertime and we're supposed to be thinking in bright and sunshiny colors and you know summery colors but this dark dreary purple blue and black with grays and stuff th this color just really really makes my heart happy um so I wanted to do a color inspired by the Edgar Allan Poe poem the raven so this is my nevermore color and I think I think I nailed it um if I do say so myself so this is the first time um, this is the first time I have actually like thought you know I want to make a color 
that's inspired by, you know, something that really I like a lot. And um, then I actually dyed it. Like, the other colors, some there's some more colors I have, and I've talked about it in previous podcasts, where they, I dyed them, and then they reminded me of something. But this one, you know, I said, well, I want to make, I want to make an Edgar Allan Poe, actually, I want to make a whole Edgar Allan Poe series. Um, the Raven and also the poem Annabelle Lee. So I'm hoping to get some more, um, some more, you know, colors that go along with that. Um, I'm not much on poetry, but I really do like those two poems. And there, I mean, there's some more, but you know, those two poems are two that I really actually like and really, really like. So anyways, I wasn't sure that this would work, but, um, I decided to try it anyway. And this is much darker than any other thing that I've dyed thus far. But, and I don't know, some people may not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. But I'm really happy with how it come, turned out. There's a few spots that are more, I guess, brownish. Where I probably put the purples and the blues cl too close together. Or maybe I put the purple and the black too close together. But, for the most part, um... <laughs> My son's trying to come in here in a big old box. Um, for the most part, I really love how it turned out. And I wasn't expecting like quite as much of these paler spots. But I really like that. I think it I think it really works. And I'm hoping, really, really hoping that I can come close to repeating this color. Um, I'm fixing to cake it up because I'm already three inches. Um, I've got three inches done for... Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh gosh. Can you see him? Yeah, there he is. There's a monster in the box. Um, so I've got three inches of fourth color. And we're going to take this up so that way I'll be ready to start on my fifth and final color. Um, so for now I have an armrest, I guess. But anyways. <laughs> Honey, you tore the box apart. Now, how are we going to move? Pack up the stuff. Uh, no, I didn't. You tore it apart. I guess we'll tape it back together, huh? So, well, just leave it like this. We're get, well, we tape it back up for stuff and then untape it. Yeah, we'll save it. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, my little holder thing is kind of falling. Sorry. Um, but, anyway. So, I was going to use this box to pack up stuff. We've got new cabinets. And it looks like he succeeded in destroying my box. <laughs> and I don't have anything else to pack the stuff from the cabinets up with. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But, anyways, we'll, we'll figure that out in a minute. So, I'm going to take this up, get that ready. And hopefully get to work on that some more. Maybe I'll have a finished object next time. Um, he wants me to show, make sure I show this yarn. Okay, so pardon the interruption. I'm going to go in just a second. But he wanted me to show you this, this yarn. Now this does speak summer. It's a little bit too bright for me. Um, I really like these darker orangey bits. That that was actually the color I was, you know, going for. And I'd like to try to do this color again and make um, <clears throat> more of, make it, like, I want to do an Outlander themed yarn as well. If anybody hasn't watched Outlander, run and watch it now. Um, it's on Stars, And I've been watching, there's two seasons, which is a bummer that there's only two seasons. But there is going to be a third season coming out in September. And I think there's going to be a fourth season. But anyways, it's based on books by, I don't know, I think Deanna. And it, her last name starts with a G, but I'm not really sure what it is. I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyways, um, so I want to make Outlander-inspired yarn. And I want to do some color similar to this, but maybe more orange instead of this... Um, I know, like paprika. That, yeah, that looks like paprika. Um, I have a Fiesta dish. Love Fiesta dishes, by the way. 
but I have a Fiesta dish that's almost that color and it's called paprika. So we're going to go with paprika for this little bit right here. Um, but anyways, I want to do more of an orangey color in the Outlander and some greens, but I'm part of a group <clears throat> on Facebook um, that's, you know, all about hand dyed yarn and they're super, super nice. I love that group. But anyways, they're doing the first, first time we ever did a dye along. So, um, they did a vote and they chose to try the layer, uh, layering method. So, um, I was really nervous. I'm not too great at, at twisting these things up, but I was really nervous about the layering thing because, um, you have to, like, put it in a dye and then, um, let that, you know, soak in. Then take it out, retwist it, put it in a different color, and so on and so forth. So the uh, the dye along was supposed to use at least three different colors. And I was terrified that I would end up with, you know, just a really, really ugly blob of brown. Because, you know, putting in all those different colors. So I started with the yellow. Then um, I did a blue. So that's where the green came in. I wish that there was more blue in here and like less the green, but anyways, um, so, and there's a little bit of blue right here. So I wish that there was more of this color, but it'll be okay. Um, so, you know, blue and yellow make green. So that, that's where the, the greens came in. Then, um, I retwisted it and put it in to, um, I make mean, I had to make my own orange using magenta and yellow so um, I put it back in the orange and at this point I was really really terrified that I would end up with a brown mess um, for some reason I, I don't think I got the orange like quite an, as much dye in there as I should have because it didn't take as much like the it wasn't very orangey whenever it got finished so I did end up you know pouring some bits of orange and I guess and that's where the darker parts came in so, I'm hoping, or I wish, that I had poured a little bit more of the, the orange in some more spots instead of just a few spots. But anyways, I wasn't too thrilled with how it came out because it is just way brighter than what, you know, I, I would generally do. Um, and, see, th these are my colors. See the difference? Um, but anyways, it was hanging outside to dry. And my son sees it and he says, Ooh, that is pretty. So he fell in love with it. Um, so definitely I'm going to make him a hat. I think a hat out of this. I'm probably, what I'm thinking about doing is um, caking it up and pulling from each, um, like the middle and the outside of the cake so that way I can hold it double. And um, so it would be more of a DK weight yarn. And I think that would help with um, where there's these big splotches. I'm afraid it's going to end up very, very variegated. But I don't know. It may not. I, I really have no idea how anything's going to knit up. I'm a little afraid in my sweater, because this has big splotches on it. I'm a little afraid it's going to be, you know, I don't know. I hope it looks good. But anyways, um, I'm thinking about doing... This held double, just, you know, mostly I've not done that. I've wanted to do a, a hat, finger and weight held double, so just to see what, how it looks. Um, but I may try, I may try a little gauge swatch and see the difference. I may do that first. But anyway, um, as I'm trying to say here, so he wants, he wants this. I'm going to make him a hat. And I think I may, I don't know. You can, I know I've told you to comment below on several other things, but if you want to comment below with your opinions here, um, I'm thinking about doing a cabling hat, but I'm a little afraid that this will be too, um, variegated and the cables won't show up on it. I know cables with dark yarn isn't good because the dark yarn doesn't show the texture as much. Um, so I know lighter yarns will show texture more. So I think, I'm thinking that since this is so bright, it might show the texture good, um, and then I can do a cable. I don't know that I'm going to use a pattern. I found a free pattern for um, DK, weight, DK weight hats, 
so that way I can get an idea of how much to cast on, how many stitches. Um, so I may um, use that. Definitely going to use my size six, 16 inch circular needles, what I used for the other hat that I just did, the vanilla fog hat. And um, I figure I'll just do a cabled, like maybe um, over six knit stitches. And, you know, you just told, like, I think I want to um, switch it around. Like, one, t one time I'll hold the cable, um, the three stitches in front, and then the next time I hold them in back. So that way it kind of looks like it's twisted. Um, and I think I'm going to do that. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just frog it and do something else. Um, so anyways, that's that. And um, I'd also wondered about doing him a brioche hat, like the Vanilla Fog, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna, I wouldn't really want to do cables again. It's been a long time since I've done anything cabled. And um, I've only done, I think I've done three cabled hats. Possibly four. I don't remember now. But I really like cables. So um, that's my, my dream knitting, my plans. Um, I got all of the drawstrings installed in the bags earlier this morning, and while I was doing that, I thought, um, I think for future bags, I'm hoping they sell, because I really, really could use the money. Um, if not, <clears throat> everybody I know is getting a bag for Christmas, whether they knit or not, which, um, I don't know anybody else that knits, but, um, I mean, I don't know anybody personally that knits. I know a bunch of people I've met online. But anyways, um, if these project bags don't sell, everybody's going to be getting a bag for Christmas, whether they craft or they don't craft. They can figure something out to put in the bag. Um, but I think they're very pretty, if I do say so myself. I love the material I picked out, but you know, I picked it out, so I, I better love it. Um, I'm wanting to do an Outlander bag. I've just got to find, i got to figure out what material I want to use for that. Um, and I'd like to do a Harry Potter bag also, because, you know, I love Harry Potter. Um, and I just, literally just now had the idea that I should figure out, I saw on a podcast, oh, what is the, Inside Number 23. And so check out that podcast if you haven't already. And she had um, maybe two episodes back. I don't know. I can never, ever keep up with episodes. But I need to start taking notes every time I watch a podcast. Um, she had a bag that somebody had sent her, a bag maker had sent her. And it was on one side cross-stitched. And it had the Hufflepuff um, logo, whatever it's called. I can't think now what it's called. But anyway... Um, it had the Hufflepuff with, you know, the whole, like, logo thing. And it was just so neat. So, just while I was talking about bags, I just had the thought, I should figure out how to get um, some sort of Harry Potter cross-stitch thing and get my grandma the supplies and just have her do the cross-stitch. I mean, I can cross-stitch, I just don't really want to at the moment. I could have her do the cross stitch and then I make the bag and that way I would have a Harry Potter bag that was partially made by my granny. That would be just really awesome. And actually while I'm doing it, I should get her to make my sister, I could get her to cross stitch like two bags, one for me, one for my sister, and then I could sew them together. That would be awesome. So I'm going to do some research on that and see if I can figure out any where to get the pattern for Harry Potter cross stitch. Um, And I guess that's about it for today. Um, I'm hoping that, well, you know, I really don't think I'm going to have anything else to show y'all until at least next week. So this will probably be it for this week's podcast. And I'm hoping I can get this uploaded this over the weekend or maybe by Monday. Um, and I'll get... Um, some product pictures of the bags I've done so far and get my Etsy shop started hopefully by this time next week but I'm not 100% sure um, and 
once I get the cabinets put in, I'll definitely take a picture and post on here because I'm super duper excited about um, getting the new cabinets. They're going to be um, they're going to be white, so I think that'll be very timeless and um, just you know like being style forever. I love well. At first, I thought I would do wood cabinets, just stained, but then I got to thinking, and whenever I was looking on Pinterest, um, I had a kitchen board, obviously, and so, I mean, every time you want to do something, remodel your house or anything, you go to Pinterest, right? So, I had a kitchen board, and most of those cabinet, those kitchens in the, on that Pinterest board had white cabinets, and... Um, or possibly gray, but gray's a little bit too contemporary for, you know, our country house here. So, um, our house is really new. We got it in 2011, but we had to get a double wide because we didn't have any land. And um, Rodney's granny agreed to let us um, put, it, put it on her land. So, um... So, anyways, in order to do that, we had to have, um, we couldn't just, you know, build a house. We had to have something, you know, double wide. So, <clears throat> we did do that. We did get, it's a really nice house, but, um, like, I feel like the house itself is built very well. We've not had any problems with it. It's just that the stuff they put in it, it was really, really, really bad. So, our cabinets now are just, um what is that like press board or particle board or something and um they're covered with that really thin laminate or i don't even know if it's laminate it's like paper and um they look pretty nice but anytime that you know you get water or anything on it it's just really it bubbles up and peeling off and it's just not really good um so while I had the money saved up. I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and order these cabinets. I've been thinking about it for over a year. And I researched and researched and figured out exactly what kind I wanted. And so I'm really happy that we're going to be able to get those. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get that pretty soon. Get them installed very, very soon. But I'm going to have to get all the rest of the stuff out of these ones first. Um... So I guess that's um, enough blabber and chit chat or whatever. Uh, so if you have any questions about anything, there's on my website there is a contact. Um, you can also email me at shaunahargisphoto at gmail.com. <clears throat> but if you use my website, shaunahargis.com, then there's a contact form that you can fill out and um, I'll get I can get the email that way. Also, um, Instagram message or Facebook message. Um, I have a Shauna Hargis Photography Facebook page. And um, also, Ravelry message would work too. I'm SL Hargis on Ravelry. I think I've, I mean, I posted this at the very beginning, but anyways, I'm saying it again. And as always, thank you so, so much if, you know, you're taking the time out of your schedule to watch... Um, my podcast, I really enjoy getting to share all the stuff I'm making with all of y'all. Um, <clears throat> if you're a returning viewer, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're this is, was your first time watching this podcast, please um, hit the subscribe button down there um, at the bottom so you can be notified if um, I, whenever I upload, you know, other videos. And, um... Hopefully, you'll keep coming back. Hope this wasn't too, you know, kind of crazy and disorganized for you. I'm, next week, I'm going to try to take notes on what I talk about in the first part and what I talk about at the end of the week. So, most of my podcasts will probably follow this type of format. Like, um, I'll film some at, towards the beginning of the week and maybe some towards the end of the week. And um, that'll be that, I guess. So, um... Until next time, bye-bye.